Dean Hensley of Times News, and I'm here with uh, Steve Bartnall, spotter of the number 34 car. And, and uh, boy, y'all had an incredible run at Daytona. It was, it was a wild day, wasn't it? It really was. You know, I, before I came over here, uh, appreciate everybody that's uh, going to join us here, but uh, before I came over, I was watching Race Hub, and they had uh, Richard Childress and Austin Dillon and his spotter, Andy Houston, and of course, Hendersonville's own Andy Petrie on there, and, and uh, that was really nice, uh, listening to their view of what they went through for the day, and it was not without mistakes and problems, but at the end of the day, they come back to win. Uh, but spotting for Michael McDowell and the Loves Trucking um, uh, Front Row Motorsports Ford was really fun for me. Michael's very good at those tracks, and, uh, you know, we were around every wreck all day long. It seemed like things were just going to be, if it happened, it was going to happen in front of us, which... As a spotter, if you make it through, it's a good thing. If you don't, uh, you know, it's partly your fault, too. And uh, But we happened to miss it this time and uh, scored points in both the stages. Uh, sixth in the first one, fifth in the second one, and um, and then ninth for the final end of the race. And uh, that was really good. Uh, great day to start the season. Sixth in points going to Atlanta. You know, some of those heavy hitters at uh, Jimmy Johnson, Chase Elliott, those guys at the back. We know they're going to come back and, and that type of stuff. So it's nice to get some points, pad as many as you can, get those stage points because uh, that's what it's all about. Great. And uh, everybody talks about the big one. There's a lot of big ones. <laughs> you know, it, it's crazy because, like I said, we were we were really close to a lot of them, and um, they happened, and we were right there, and Michael made the right moves to get around them. But when the, the aerodynamics in these cars are a lot different than they used to be. Uh, they have no right heights now. They let these cars run on the ground. So that being said, the blocking you used to see in the front, which they could do and the air pushed the front car out ahead of the other cars because there's a cushion of air there. Now that they're on the grounds, that cushion isn't there as much. So now in order to block somebody, they have to be closer to them. And what you saw when the blocking happened is people would turn each other around. And it was really unfortunate. Uh, I hate to see so many cars torn up, yeah. have, you know, Working on cars in the past and and uh, working with Andy and, and different teams, those guys work all winter long for this one race. Uh, even though we have 37 more races to go this year, uh, they put a lot of effort in these Daytona cars. And to see everybody get tore up like they did, it was uh, it wasn't uh, wasn't a lot of fun. And I hate it for the guys all back at the shop. Oh, okay. And uh, if you can describe what it was like after the race, after I, I know that was a big relief that your car was. Wasn't scratch. Right? Well, I think that's it. You know, we were really close to the last one. And I think we're going to review a little bit of the tapes here in a little bit. But when uh, uh, Eric got spun at the end, when and I, and I don't really think Austin did anything wrong. It's the Daytona 500. I think Eric said the same thing. I think you got to stay in the gas, and what happens happens, and and you can be one or the other. And um, but we just happened to be right in line when Eric shot off the wall, and Michael. McDowell did an amazing job of drifting underneath him and about lost it and stayed in the gas. It's something we learned working together a couple of years ago that on the last lap, you got to stay in the gas. I mean, honestly, that's that's what Austin did, and that's what we had to do after we got out of our slide, and that's what got us to the top 10. Had he lifted any more, you know, we could have finished 11th or 12th, and, and that's 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 not a lot of fun. Yeah. That ninth place top 10 at Daytona scoring stage points, that was a lot of fun. And if you can describe your feelings for Austin, too, when he was... Well, I think for myself, it was really cool because I didn't know who won, honestly. When you're up there spotting, first of all, it was a little bit dark. You're in binoculars. You're looking out across the track. You see the car spin. Your first reaction is to try to get your guy through it. And so I didn't know who won. I, re I really had no idea it was the three. So as soon as we come across the line, it's like, oh, man, we got a top ten. The crew chief's... Congratulating the driver. It's a lot of fun. Packing your bag as quick as you can. You want to get out of there, beat the traffic. And I look at the scoreboard and I see the three. And the first thing that comes to mind is Andy, my very best friend, Andy Petrie. Uh, but for Richard, I mean, what an amazing thing. For 20 years ago, he won it with Dale. Brought the three back about six or seven years ago to win it on that 20th anniversary. Just some of the things that happened, you know, the... The kid giving Dale the penny and he won, Austin getting the penny and he wins. Um, I just, it was a, it was really cool to see the three and then the 43 with Bubba Wallace. What a great race for him. And 
most of these spotters are all my friends, so I'm really happy for those guys, Andy Houston and and uh, and stuff. And but I'm happy for those guys. But to see the three and the 43, and I think the 11 was next, and the 22. These are numbers from the past that just kind of seem like old time racing or Rubbins racing, and uh, it was really cool to uh, to see that for Richard and and Andy and and uh, and and Austin and everybody. All right. And everybody uh, wants to know what's in the mind of the spotter. Uh, especially like during these wrecks, that's why I was wanting to uh, show some footage of the wrecks and yeah, how you describe it. <laughs> you know, as a, as a spotter, your job is really, I explained it in an article I did earlier this year, uh, air traffic controller. You know, uh, you're really, and then not the air traffic controller of everything in the air, but the air traffic controller of the planes that are on the ground. Mm -hmm. So your, your thing, we wear four radios up there, and... One radio, you're talking to the driver, and the crew chief and the crew can hear it. And then you have another radio where you're talking to just the crew chief and the engineers. And then you have another radio where you're scanning NASCAR. And then the fourth radio, you kind of get an option. <laughs> Most guys listen to themselves. Uh, I don't. Uh, uh, it's not that I don't like listening to myself. I check it at the beginning of the race. The first few laps, I'll listen to myself to make sure I'm coming across clear. But that fourth radio, I'll usually put it on MRN radio. Because here's the thing. There's five spotters for them. Those radio guys are in turns one, two, three, and four, and two guys in the booth. So they're feeding me information. So at, at some point and during the race, many times, you're talking, hearing something about a wreck from the radio, hearing NASCAR telling you what to do, and hearing the crew chief saying we're going to pit second time by, and you have to take it all in. And it's, 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 it's a lot of fun, and it's something I've done for a long time and been... Fortunate to be successful and win some some races doing it and uh, really enjoy it a lot. Oh, great. Yeah, great. but but you know uh, the biggest thing is you're up there looking. You're looking really around him, mostly in front of him. You know something that McDowell wanted a lot was the car in front of you. He can tell where he's going. He can't tell what the car in front of him. So if anybody ever listens to me on NASCAR.com, you'll hear me say room to push by one, room to push by two, and that's allowing him to know what the guy, how much room that guy has to push. So if he has to push him, he can. And, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what I do. Just try to feed him as much. And I, I tell everybody we're like artists. We're trying to paint a picture of what's going on because the crew chief and the driver can only see limited parts of that, of that race. So okay. awesome. that's what we're trying. So Great. You want to if we can, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to talk you through. You know, it's, it won't be what I said the other day, but I'll kind of tell you what we're thinking when, when things happen. And, right. and so, yeah, if you want to grab that, we'll go to this here. I think this is the end of the first stage right here, and so I'm going to click play here. You got it okay? Yep. And you can see at the front curve, we're back here in the back, I don't know if my finger, but that stuff all went to the top, and normally everything goes up before it goes down. So if I come back to that one more time here, where is it at here? Yeah, it's going to be right here. Right here, you see they start blocking there, and then we're on the bottom. When they go up, I just tell them to get low, get low, and then move up, move up, move up, and then just bring it back to the flag, don't get run over. That's kind of what you're trying to do, is just keep them out of trouble during the event and after the event. So, they're going to show it one more time here. And you can just see where the, the second yellow car, and, and we just kind of... Pushing Denny Hamlin right through the middle of it and, and stuff. So yeah, that's a great job. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a lot is the driver's reaction too. So the second one we have here is um, okay. This is the second uh, green white checker. I mean, this is the second segment, and we're farther back here. We're about the fifteenth car, and I see him wrecking. And right now, you're just kind of telling him to stay low, stay low, and then the two starts coming off the wall. And I'm telling him to go above him, and the two just clips us just a little bit, but not enough damage. Again, you're just kind of trying to see, trying to watch these cars and see where they are and that type of stuff. Well, that was a hard hit for that number nine, I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of cars took some really hard hits, you know, just the way he turned up into the wall <laughs> like that. Thanks. And we're down real low. You can't see us in the back right now, but we're coming underneath it. So, yeah. And then the last one is the end of the race. Let's see here. And then uh, this will be actually going into the white flag lap. I think they just took the white flag. And we're running about 10th. We just got our lap back. We're in the back of this pack. 
just trying to find our way. Oh no, this is an earlier one. This one here, we're trying to get our lap back. Actually, we're we're. Um, oops, didn't mean to click. We're actually trying to get our lap back. And if you watch this again, let me go back to this one here one more time. You see there inside, we're already up in front of this. So we, we were lapped down, but we were running about sixth to the leaders. And again, you know, that was just more him than it was me. We just happened to happen above us and it stayed above us. So, um, so that was that. So I don't know if we have the end of the race here or not, do we, Dean? Might be it. Yeah. Yep, just had it right there. Right there. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to keep clicking here till we get back to it. Okay. That's the other one, right? Yeah. Well, this is just showing the highlights of them. So we'll just kind of go through it. But every spotter is trying to do whatever they can, you know, trying to get these cars. They don't have great brakes on them. They're trying to get them woed up so they don't run into people like that 62 did just that 88. Yeah. Or the 41. And, and, and you can see we're right here down on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that yeah. on the yeah. live or not. But yeah. but we just happened to go underneath that one. So so that was good. Yeah. I think. Uh, Why well, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like it says, just, it stopped on Facetime Live. All right. Okay, so we just missed that one again, but right. and then uh, you can really see this last one here. He's wrecking, and we go sliding underneath him oh, right man, there, that's close. and he just misses him, and he and he like I said, he was drifting basically. And right here, you're just telling them straight in the throttle. And we're back here in 10th, uh, or excuse me, in 9th, trying to pass uh, Ryan Newman. And we'll come back into the picture at the end. But uh, we don't quite get it done. He beats us by a nose. But uh, but all in all, it, you know, it's a great race for everybody. So okay, great. Right. so really excited to be part of that. You know, uh, to be 30 years in a row at Daytona, to be involved in this, uh, I'm blessed. And uh Got to thank my family, my dad and my mom too, Linda and and my mom and everybody for supporting me. But uh, to get to do this for 30 years and uh, and then finish 10th in your 30th Daytona 500 is pretty cool. Awesome.